Lane in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Hi. Hello, it's uh, Lane in Slippery Rock. That's what I said, Lane in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Tom. Good to see you on TV. Again. Thank you very kindly. A uh, question for Mr. Bean. I'm sure. All right. Uh, I remember as a kid listening to a record album uh, that... Uh, it wasn't it, the one about the tampon, was it? <laughs> no, no. Uh, oh, that's an amusing story. This one was called I Ate the Baloney. I Ate the Baloney. I Ate the Baloney. And uh, I've been searching for it on the Internet, searching for it at record stores. I was wondering if there's any chance of it coming out on CD anytime soon. I, I think by popular demand, it'll stay buried. Oh. Uh, <laughs> It was a song that I sang, Lane, uh, as you remember, and it was two Irishmen and a Hebrew, once shall I sing it, Please. went out for recreation, and they took enough provisions along to spend a week's vacation. But they got lost out in the woods, the nights grew dark and lonely, and at last all of their food ran out, except a piece of baloney. Uh, and I could carry the second verse if you'd like. All right, well, well right ahead, sir. From Slippery Say, Rock. Wait, let us get the bouncing ball in position. Go. Uh, I, I'm, I'm on the air. I've, I've completely lost it. You also told a story about a, uh, a mandarin and, and his daughter. Yes. And all, uh, about her wanting to find a girl weigh 85 pounds. Uh, six foot three, weigh 85 pounds. He goes to a house of ill repute and he says, I wish to find incredibly rich Chinese guy. I wish to find a girl six foot the three weighs 85 pounds. Madam says, that, that could take some time. He says, the money is no object. To make a long story short, they find a girl, six foot three, 85 pounds. They fly out of China. She's ushered into a Mandarin castle, bathed, anointed in the finest of oils, dressed in a diaphanous silk gown. She finds herself standing alone in a huge room, silken drapes all around. She waits, trembling with expectation. Set of the drapes parts, the Mandarin appears with a long, thin reed in his hand. He approaches her, says, take off your clothes, my dear. She says, I don't know what kind of a girl you think I am. He says, take off your clothes. She undoes the clasp at her throat. The diaphanous silk gown wafts to the floor. She stands there, stark naked, six foot three, 85 pounds. The Mandarin approaches her, ra raising the stick. He passes her, parts a second set of drapes. Tiny little Chinese girl comes out. He says, now, you see, you're not to drink your milk. You look like that. <laughs> 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 Big laugh and slippery rock. Oh, yeah, that's one. I mean, so many of your stories. <laughs> uh, I, so many of your stories use, use ethnic types, and do you feel that we've lost something uh, with the political correctness movement where it, it's hard to laugh at this anymore? I mean, your stories are clean. They, they're not, I, I don't personally, I don't think they're offensive in slippery rock. Um, do you think we've lost something with, with this, uh, this movement? Oh, I on. don't recommember. I, 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 you can still do jokes about white males. That's about it. <laughs> and by the way, we do some pretty funny stuff, don't <laughs> we? we? Do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wayne, I'm glad you triggered this. Thanks for calling us, young man. <laughs> thank you. Keep all, up the good work. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. I, I, what have I got? A couple of minutes here. Yes. Uh, let me ask you about your program, uh, Dr. Quinn, yeah. Medicine Woman. Yes. You appear to relish the role that you play of the of the of the crotchety curmudgeon yeah, yeah with a um, heart of gold yeah with a heart of gold i love it i love this kid sean tuvey that i work with he's the little boy and i love him and i love working with jane seymour and we work in this glorious uh, ranch up in uh, above malibu in the malibu mountains and it's I'm, I'm ashamed to take the money i just love doing it mm -hmm. it's a great show it's a big hit in the heartland it's family viewing and, and it really is a lot hipper than a lot of the crowd in LA would let on. You have been quoted as saying over the years that since you were a kid you wanted to wind up as the happiest SOB in America. And I am. And you, you appear to have wrestled all of your demons to a draw. I have. And to achieve that. That's I wonderful. I have a beautiful young wife, Allie Mills. Who I've met. Played the mother in the Wonder Years and I always thought she was a fox and then I met her one day and and I hadn't even dated in 15 years. I, I fully expected to become an old codger sitting down getting the early bird special at the, uh, the Woolworths cafeteria on the 3rd Street Mall, polishing the silverware with a paper napkin and grumbling. And then I met this woman and it changed and, my and life. And now you do it together. <laughs> we do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
true. She said to me, you're too old, you're going to die. I said, the new guy will take you to the funeral. Don't worry. <laughs> on that note, please join Mr. Bean on Dr. Quinn Medicine Women on Saturdays here on CBS. You'll check the listings in your paper for the exact time and station. When you come back here, and I have the unerring feeling that you will be invited back here, uh, we'll, we'll take a little tour of Italy that you did on your honeymoon, okay? Ah, yeah. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bean. Thank you, lad. Good night, sir. We will continue with Fran Cook after these messages.